Hey guys, welcome back to Sports with Mono and Mono. It's Jim and Steve here. Steve? Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. And anybody listening new, you know, we are the brothers Monahan, Jim and Steve. We are. And uh, thanks for listening and let's jump right into uh, our past week of sports. Okay, well listen, I think it's... We have a little partiality here, so we're going to start with the NFL, right? And Steve and I were just talking about it, this, the Packers and Aaron Rodgers, this, this quarterback rating, which not only do we not understand it, I, Aaron Rodgers doesn't understand it. But he had a great day, five touchdown passes, or, you know. Five, and he ran for one. He's the first NFL QB. To have a day like that, since surprisingly, <laughs> and it's as a Super Bowl winning quarterback. So Still don't know who it is. <laughs> Mark Rippon, yep. Washington Redskins in 1991. And we just wrote down what the quarterback rating came out to. One well, it was 158.3, which, which, you know, translates to he was 25 for 31 for 429 yards. And, and I guess that's fa- as good as it gets. Yeah, and our mm-hmm. favorite quote about Aaron Rodgers was, he's like, boy, it sure sounds nice, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how the hell they come up with it. <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> and besides Mark Rippon, who else was doing it? It was Norm Van Brocklin. Right? And you know what's funny about Aaron Rodgers not knowing it? Because uh, what's, the, what's the test I'm thinking of? The uh, one that they... The NFL players make them test. I, I actually took it. I'm drawing a blank on it. But, you know, the, the intelligence test, oh, well. you know, that the rookies uh, take. Um, Aaron Rodgers, I think, a- actually has the highest score <laughs> in the history of this test. So if Aaron Rodgers doesn't know how to put together the QB rating. Then we don't feel so bad that we don't know how to do it. <laughs> All right. But he had a great game. And, you know, your Cowboys bounced back against the Eagles, which can't figure this team out. I I, I really can't, you Cowboys. No, I mean, you know, I wasn't even kind of aware of how many injuries that we did have. So, actually, a lot of guys came back yesterday. A lot of players. Mari Cooper uh, had a thigh issue. He came back, had a great day, 100 yards. Elliott ran well. The two tackles were back, Tyron Smith and Lyell Collins. Defensively, Byron Jones came back. So, you know, they were on a three-game skid. And I really like this Van Der Esch kid. He's going to oh, be a player. I'm He's, a big, big <laughs> fan of uh, me too. Leighton Van Der Esch. There's no question. Me so, too. I mean, the Cowboys getting off the schneid. Big win. Eagles, you know, lay an egg. So the Cowboys go up in the division with the 4-3 and three record. They're 3-0. and oh. In the <clears throat> NFC East, and, and we'll start to see breaker. separation in a couple of well, weeks. Well, you see, because right now, you know, the Giants are two and five, and they're one game, you know, behind the Eagles. Nah, and, the know. Giants are toast. No, we know that. <laughs> I'm just saying from a record perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's still wide right open. Right. You know, two weeks now, everyone will start separating, and yeah. You know. So let's just segue to the New York Giants. So, Mr. Jones had another tough day at the office. You can't blame the kid. He got sacked eight times. Nope. And listen, I think we talked about this, and you know I'm all in on this kid. I like him a lot. And we knew this wasn't going to be a year that we were going to do anything. I said if we went 7-9, and nine, it would have been a successful year. He's that gonna, ain't happening. It probably isn't. So the six, five wins, whatever. But this kid's going to school, and this is this is the best thing for him. Yeah, and it's, you know. it's all part of the learning process. Yep. So Eli went through it, and Bradshaw Lincoln, went through Lincoln it. Could be a thousand quarterbacks yep. that's gone through it. But you know, we also still have to question Pat Shermer. Um, I'm starting to question him more and more than you know. I, I got to bring this up. You know, the game is is gets tight. Giants go down early. You know, it's in a you know kind of a driving rain. It's wet for each side, so I'm not making excuses there. No, Barkley's back. Yeah. But come on. I mean, you, you got a third and 18 in the fourth quarter, and, and you're calling the draw play. And I don't. I know it's Saquon Barkley, but even if Jim Brown and Gail Sanders is back there, yep. I don't know what they're thinking. And I don't know either. fourth down, and you have some timeouts in yep. your pocket, and he decides to, yep. uh, to go for it deep in kind of the Giants' territory. So it just opens questions for Shermer. Meaning, 
you know, I think the wheels are starting to fall off right now for the Giants. It's going to be a long year. But I, I don't think he's on the hot seat. I think they're going to give him at least another year. Yeah, to see I don't if mean he he's can, gotten fired. He made the transition. He made the decision, or somebody in the organization made the decision. My only point: it's 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 going to go on his, uh, you know. Evaluation at the end of the year, and his less than stellar record to begin with, right? Right. I so, but I, I felt it necessary to, to question that because I know a lot of Giant fans were questioning. I it. was sitting there with my jaw on the on the floor. Right. I mean, I, I said the same thing. You know. So the Giants uh, two and five and not looking good. So, but there was one interesting thing, and this is kind of local thing from Fordham, right? Chase Edmonds, yeah, ran wild yesterday. I mean, you know, is that a reflection on? He's a surprise, really good player, or a terrible defense making. You know, I mean, I don't know, but three touchdowns. But got to give the kid credit. I like him. I like I, him. I, I can't tell you one Fordham <laughs> player since the Vince Lombardi. You know. So but I want to say one thing about Chase Edmonds because this is something I always admired, like in Walter Payton and stuff. When he scored the touchdown, yeah. he handed the ball to the referee. Didn't do this yeah. old dancing thing. Classy. We like that. We love that. <laughs> yes, and that do. did not go unnoticed to me yesterday. Yeah, so. it's good. He had a good day. And yep. I'm happy for uh, Fordham kid. Big time. And we got connections to Monahans. We have a brother graduated Fordham, and we have a niece that graduated Fordham. We do. So, listen, a couple other things. Let's, you know, well, let's jump to uh, the San Diego Titan game. I got to keep, I got to keep harping on this. The, 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 well, for our audience, uh, let's go. The Philip Rivers thing, I don't know what it is. He's just he's just not going to get there. He's going to the Hall of Fame, like we said, but right, this was a Melvin Gordon fumble at the it was the no, most bizarre twenty nine seconds I've ever that's seen the in my point. In I mean life. it got to Melvin Gordon at the end there, but I mean, come on. I, I don't think I've, I've kind of seen a finish like that where a team you absolutely you think is gonna win this game and oh my god, the turn of events and Anthony Lynn, the coach, uh you know what, Anthony went to his credit. I saw uh, some blips on him. He obviously was disappointed in the loss. I like it. But him. at the end of the day, he said, we couldn't get one yard. Now, it, it was some unfortunate circumstances. I get it. They got one yard twice, but they pulled it off right. the board. But the point is, Anthony <laughs> Lynn at least manned up and said, you know what, we're an NFL team. If I like him get, a lot. Actually. We can't get one yard. Hey, man, we don't deserve to win. You got it. So the Chargers, are, they're up there with one of the most disappointing teams. Year after year for me. Um, like so... You know, the Chiefs, well, we're just scanning the NFL. Pat Mahomes gets hurt on Thursday night. The Chiefs actually got some good news. It sounds like he's only got out three weeks. He's a tough kid. He'll be back. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, that's devastating to the Chiefs if he was going to be out long term. There's no question. And then um, I would say the other, not surprised, but, well, the Rams bounce back. Um, yeah. I took Atlanta, actually. I thought Atlanta would finally mm. win a game. But they can't get out of their own way, nah. and you can bet the farm. Coach Dan Quinn is now on the Dan Quinn watch. Absolutely, I don't know if they're going to, you know, make him finish the season, but I can see him gone in the next uh, couple weeks. So I agree. Watch out for that. Matt Ryan gets hurt in that game, but the Falcons are done. And on the flip side, our boy Jerry Goff. Um, who really hasn't played well at all this agreed, year. Agreed, agreed. he had a very serviceable game, so I think with yep. the trade of Jalen Ramsey, maybe that infused <laughs> oh. I'm just saying, maybe it just ignites the Rams' defense and they start playing up, to, up yeah. to their ability. Okay, they gave up They're a lot for that. very talented. Two number ones for him? That's a, that's a steep price. And, and you know what's also ridiculous that I saw? The Rams do not have a first-round pick. Uh, until, until, like, what, 2023 or 24. something? 24. <laughs> so, so you better win it, you know, yeah, you're this all year in or next year. It's all in. Yep. And what, Sean McVay will be, what, uh, 40 by the time <laughs> they have a first-round right. pick? But, uh, you know, a couple other teams, that, and I'm not going to say surprises either, but uh, the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, went to Seattle. Right. Yeah. Shout out to Ryan Whitley, who's a big Baltimore Ravens fan, and he keeps saying they're all in, and I keep saying, hey, I, I bet them every week until they show me otherwise. Yeah. So, and the 49ers. I mean, I don't know. Is this team for real? 
That's I got to ask you, because I don't see them that often. They are and so playing in a mud bowl yesterday was really not indicative yeah. of anything. I mean, I mean the, the Niners were favored by uh, 10 points at Washington. But, I mean, you know, we live in North Jersey. It rained oh. here, but nothing like it did in Washington. But the bottom line is Nick Boza had a unbelievable game as a rookie. He, he, he was dominant. He's a I solid player. I mean, he had player. tackles for loss. He had sacks. He had... He Agreed. Other tackles. I like him and a plus lot. His brother Joey had two sacks yesterday. I think both those brothers are, are solid NFL guys. I man. think Nick's going to be the come out on top of this because you know, Joey's healthy. been around for like four or five years nah, now. Not that many. Joey's probably three years in now. Fourth year, I got to say. Yeah, right. But anyway, he's the big brother. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the Ravens. And another game I'll, I'll uh, throw out there was the Saints versus the Bears. I've always been a Teddy Bridgewater fan, and I'm not just saying that because the Saints are undefeated with him behind the you know center, but he is probably the best NFL backup quarterback, and he's going to be a free agent next year. And I don't know why a team doesn't invest in Teddy Bridgewater. Well, because like, he, like he had a ma- but he had a major knee injury, you know, a few years ago. That's fine. My point is, he had to work his way back. But he was the bona fide starter in Minnesota. He was, good. he was getting that gig. We watched him at Louisville. He is a smart kid. And I'm going to concede that you had this Bridgewater. I wasn't sold on him as, as a full-time fill-in for Drew Brees. Huh. I'm, I'm, I'm back-stepping half a step because he's played solid. He's got a lot of talent around him, though. He but, really does. Okay, but he's still the quarterback of the team. I agree, though. And obviously, Bruce, uh, Drew Brees should be back probably next week, I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> But I just wanted to shout out to, to him. And then on the other side, the Bears are kind of in trouble. What did we talk about in preseason? Our NFL preview show, I said, I am not sold on the Bears at all. And that's really, this is this is crunch time for them. Yeah, well, they're going to run Mitch Trubisky out of town. Well, I, I, mean, think, I think they're going to run him out sooner rather than later. But I, what do they have in, in, in they the bullpen? Nothing. They nothing. Got Chase Daniel, <laughs> you know, 10-year backup out of right. Missouri. But who's come in and played some good games and stuff, but is he a full-time guy? No, not no. at all. So, you know, listen, they also, they, they gave up a first-round pick to move up one slot to get Trubisky. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Trubisky shows some flashes. He has a couple good games. But overall, I would say, um, I don't know if the Bears are, are very happy with Mitchell. No, Trubisky. the Chicago fans are not very happy with him either. And then um, I'll just finish, I guess, on the NFL. I mean, the Col- yeah. you know, the Colts, you know, beat a good Texans team. Jacoby Brissett had a great, great afternoon. Four touchdown passes, Dude, 300 yards. This guy has really stepped up and yeah. silencing the critics, and man. The, and the yeah. Colts got a solid running game. And we talked about Quentin Nelson is probably now considered the best offensive lineman. Yes. And then I'll finish with the Bengals. Huh. Andy Dalton yesterday. <laughs> now, we're not talking Ken Anderson here. I am so vindicated by this. I, I, I wouldn't bet I, Andy Dalton and the Bengals in in a thousand years. When I, He threw three <laughs> interceptions in about a three and a half minute span. I was shaking my head going, oh my God. I was laughing going, I, I've I mean, seen was, this a hundred com- times. It was comical. <laughs> I've the, seen this a hundred times. The Bengals are in big, big trouble. Oh. You can bet the farm they would most likely, if they keep going the way they're going, a top five pick. So look for the Bengals to, you know, be in on the Tua or Tua watch. Uh, Justin Herbert, uh, you know. Who I like, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I was, they're going to be some good quarterbacks. If he came Next out year, last year and the Giants Rich, took him, I wouldn't Quarterback have rich draft. So, yep. I mean, that's kind of the recap. Uh, you got the Patch Jets tonight. And I like, oh, um, yeah, but yeah. I like the Pats to smoke them. I, and the Pats got some injury problems on yep. offense. But, you know, I, I, I listen, it's the New York Jets. I, uh, I'll, I'll take the, the Patriots in the, the cover tonight. So Eight days a week I'll take the oh Patriots God, over there. So. But listen, our NFL segment was sponsored by Coriano Trucking Incorporated and loyal sponsor of ours, and we thank them. Absolutely. Thank you, Guy Coriano. So listen, let's stay with a little football theme until we switch to baseball. But the the college scene, this Michigan-Penn State thing, right? That was the marquee game on Saturday <coughs> night. Agreed. Opposite the Yankee-Astro game. Yep. 
But I told you this 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 Harbaugh, he's reeling, and he's if he can't beat Penn State, he can't beat Ohio State, and that's coming up right down the road. What do you think? Is well, is Penn State better than Michigan State, yeah, or is Michigan yeah. State not living up to expectations? No, I think this year the University of Michigan is not as good as Penn State, not at all. Uh, Penn State's a top ten team. They got a new quarterback, this kid Sean Clifford, who's a sophomore. I took like over him. for Trace McSorley. I like him. Not really missing a beat. He seems like he's got command of the offense. I like him. Looks like Penn State has some really talented uh, uh, athletes on the team. Yep. And the fact that it was home at Penn State and it was a whiteout night. So if you watch the game, well, it's, listen, you got the rabid Penn State fans. That's actually, how it goes. And it's also the second largest venue in the country behind uh, the big house in Michigan. Yep. But the point is, Michigan. Michigan goes down early. They scramble. They fought back. I'm not going to say Michigan wasn't competitive in this game. They had the opportunity to go down and at least maybe tie it, uh, you know, less than five minutes or, you know, late in the fourth quarter. And Penn State had a great defensive stand. And, listen, I tip my hat to Penn State. So do I want to throw Harbaugh under the bus? Yes and no. I think this is a, a – I think Penn State was better, however – Harboy does not win the big game, and we'll keep shouting that to the stars. And we he pr- keep proves us right week he after week, us right? <laughs> week after week, and yep. I think Harbaugh. Yeah, I really, you know, before we even do our prediction show, I'm sure you're all in on the Ohio State Buckeyes. You betcha, wiping them for you, the fifth year in a row. You betcha. Says I don't see any reason to to put Michigan. Uh, you know, buy Michigan stock in that game. So, but a couple other things. You know, one team I really like is Florida. I mean, they just seem to they play tough. They play in the toughest league in in the college SEC, football, and, which is un, they played unparalleled. Played a tough schedule too. And they win, and they win. Yeah. And, you know, even when they play the great teams, they lose. You know, yeah. very closely. So yeah. they beat South Carolina. South yep. Carolina, of course, was coming off the Georgia Big victory. Upset. Yep. But South Carolina, I'll give Will Mushcamp credit. They're very competitive. Yep. I think this is probably his third year after getting fired from Auburn. And uh, look for South Carolina to be competitive moving forward. So that was a good game. Yep. Um, and listen, there's one thing I wanted to bring up because, you know, Wisconsin lost. Um, oh, God. But but Jonathan Taylor, fastest to 5,000 yards. Yeah. And we talked about him on yeah. our show before. Kenny Backer brought him to my attention. He's, he's a, a Jersey, Jersey kid. Jersey kid, yeah. So How he, about that? That's yeah. some impressive record. It is, but, you know, kind of gets uh, lost in the uh, in the shuffle. They they were up against Illinois. Oh. Illinois is coached by Lovey Smith. Have you seen Lovey lately with the white beard? With the yeah, Florida I thought that beard? was David Letterman yeah, coaching. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But you got to give Illinois credit to come back against the beef of Wisconsin. And that's the first Illinois win they've had in, what, oh 10 God. years? Yeah. <laughs> right, and, and forever. Right. Um, so then some other college news. You know, Tua gets hurt uh, for Alabama kind of early fine. on. Yeah, but he's, listen, will he be fine? They say he's going to be ready because the big showdown with LSU, number one versus number two, is in two weeks. Point is, he had this surgery on this ankle. It's the same surgery he had last year on the other ankle. Okay. So my only point being is, he's going to obviously declare for the draft. When you know, NFL teams are looking at him, will he may be the number one overall pick? Well, if he's got some ankle issues, and you know how they dissect each kid, he may drop two to two, three, four. Okay. I'm just throwing that out there down the okay. ride. Down the, the the line. Well, he's not going to. Now this seals the deal that he's not going to win the Heisman Trophy again. It's going to be Hurts or it's going to be somebody like that. Well, I tell you what, Tua Tua has got twenty seven touchdowns and two interceptions. I know, but if he misses two three games or something, if then, he misses one, I still kind of like his chances. But he's got to beat LSU and he's got to you know beat you know lead Alabama to the major wins. Um, what else happened? I thought there was another interesting thing that happened. Tennessee, obviously, played Alabama, right? So there's a local kid, Jared Garantano, who played at Bergen Catholic. Yep. Uh, he's a redshirt junior, wears number two for the Vols. However, Jeremy Pruitt is the Tennessee head coach. So this made you know, all, all the uh, highlights. So what Garantano did, 
was you know called the quarterback sneak down by the goal line. Obviously, a play came in. The coach wasn't happy. Garantana sticks the ball out. It gets slapped away. Fumble. Alabama returns the ball. What, 103, four yards? Something ridiculous. Yep. But the reaction from Jeremy Pruitt to Garantana was he grabbed his face mask. That was Bobby Knightish kind of thing. And right. I, 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 that, he kind of got a free pass. I haven't seen people harping on it. Like You know how many times my coaches who will remain anonymous grab my face mask when I screwed up? My point is, we live in a society, uh, and I get it. He can't do it anymore. You can't. You, you can't. I and just I'm can't. Not, listen, I'm not condoning it. My only point is, we grew up, we're both over 50 years old, but we grew up in an era where it we, was the wild, wild west. And I saw <laughs> things going, people behind, this is, this is the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. You wouldn't think it was happening unless you were behind the but curtain. we didn't know any better, too, yep. back in the day. That's, that's yep. just the way it was. And, you know, unfortunate, you know, for Garantano, that he, uh, you know, was the recipient of this. Kid made a mistake. But I, I needed to point that out. I saw it. You I know, saw a local, it. A local kid. So. You bet. But, you know, the big marquee matchup, Alabama's got Arkansas. Um, they, they'll wipe them <clears> even <throat> with the backup quarterback. Yep. But the following week, that's the big game, number one versus two, Alabama LSU. I got a big fan of, of the show, Walter Hahn. He lives in Arkansas. He's a big Razorback. And sue, sue, sue. No, it's pig. Sue <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, right? Okay, but you know, they're very particular uh, about getting it right. You know? I know they are. Anyway, no. Hey, Walter, how are you? That's All right, good. listen, so that, that we covered college pretty good. Let's just touch base on high school football because Steve and I, you know, you know our loyalty is St. Joe's, and, yep. they, you know, they were the number one team in the state. Don Bosco was, you know, a great team, two. number five, but two and three, whatever. And they came to our house and gave us a beatdown. It was 38, 35-14, yeah, it which was, was surprising. It wasn't even close. So, right. listen, the St. Joe's credit, they beat Bergen Catholic the, the week before, big game. Right. However, I don't understand how you have an emotional letdown like this, obviously. Listen, Don Bosco. The rivalry is so intense. Yeah, exactly. it, could, it could happen any time. I'm not anytime. diminishing Don Bosco in the slightest. I mean, I don't care what their record is. We both played in these games. Oh, my God. And we, you know, yeah. we know, <laughs> trust me, we know the intensity <laughs> of these games. Ferocious. So, the point of the matter is congratulate Bosco. St. Joe's will rebound. They still got St. Peter's on the schedule. Right, so they St. got Seton Hall next week yeah. in, East, in uh, East Orange or West Orange, no, whatever it is. Of Seton Hall, which is right kind of where you said it is. Yeah. But, and then they got to play St. Peter's, who's the new number one team yep, in New Jersey. Yep, they're yeah. undefeated at 7-0. And, oh. and rightfully so. They are. I mean, they're they, well deserving of the yep. number one ranking. So, but my point is, looking forward to the Green Knights uh, and the St. Peter's uh, Marauders. I know, but question. if it's in Jersey City, I'm not going because getting there Unless and parking. Unless we have a helicopter <laughs> ride, it's, it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> and that ain't happening. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll view it online because parking there, I'll miss the whole game. Yeah, it's know. in Caven Point. Oh, yeah. really? Caven Point. Okay. Yeah, you can see the Statue of Liberty. Oh, I can see the Statue nice? of Liberty from my, my house. Oh, isn't know. that nice? <laughs> okay. <laughs> But anyway, high school football is intense, and and yeah. you know it's going down in the wire. We got what about three, four weeks away yeah. from and on the state pub, playoffs. And on the public side, locally for us, Ramapo, uh, my boy Charles Suprema, he uh, a mild knee sprain in the first half against Wayne Hills. Yep. And I'll give Wayne Hills credit; they battled Ramapo, and that game went to overtime. So uh, Ramapo prevailed. They're still undefeated. But uh, 19 game winning streak yeah, in public. 19 game winning streak. Mm -hmm. Ramapo, for our, our audience, was the first team in state history in New Jersey to go 13 and 0 and win the state championship. And the only reason was last year, high school football in New Jersey decided to do what's kind of like a Super Bowl thing where a group champion would meet, like the North group champion would meet the South group champion. Okay. So they got right. that extra game. So. That's really the distinction, not diminishing their accomplishments. Because normally it's, it's 11 and 0 or 12 and yeah, 0 or exactly. whatever. Yeah, So the right. point is, you know, Ramapo okay. has uh, got a 19 game win streak. Hey, but we're going to keep you up to date just as much on the NFL as we will high school and college. Yeah. yeah. 
And and if you this, have any questions about it and any commentary, please send us an email at sports with mono and mono at gmail. And you can find us on SoundCloud and YouTube as well. So. And you could you could also send us a message directly from those sites, YouTube. But if you want to, you know, you can also send us an email. We'll we'll get back to you on both of them. Yep. We had who? What was your friend? Spidermon. Spidermon sent a, a very very nice email via YouTube. Yeah, we appreciate that very you bet. much, buddy. Thank you, you bet. so much. Um, so listen, this segment we're going to wrap up football. It's sponsored by Lynch Toyota of, of Manchester, Connecticut, loyal sponsor. And let's move on to baseball, Steve. Why? What's going on in baseball? <laughs> <laughs> There might be a Yankee fan yeah. or two out there, right? So I had a coach. I had a coach. You know, a twelve and thirteen year old game. You know, my son and so on and so forth. So I didn't really get to to watch the Yankee game until I don't know. We got probably about ten o'clock. It's probably about the fifth inning or so. And um, listen, we tatted on this show all year and never wavered that the Houston Astros were the best team. In no, baseball. we didn't. The Yankees. Had a great year, but again, the philosophy of, of the New York Yankees is championship or bust. So, all right, they overcame a lot. Listen, the Yankees won a hundred games. Aaron Boone, yep. first manager, blah blah blah, and yep. went through, blah blah blah. Yep. Right, we yep. get that. We got it. However, I got to tell you, man, they were in this, and uh, obviously, it gets to this game six. There was a rain out. You know that I think kind <clears throat> whatever. Of, but I'm not making excuses. The only point is, screws screws up the pitching by where game. You know the Yankees in the American but it screws League up everybody. Championship pitching. series have to start relievers. We never saw that growing up. I know I this know was a piecemeal a thing, age, but it, I'm like, oh my god. But the point is, right. it, we, let's jump to the the ninth inning and. DJ LeMayhew, I love this kid. Oh my God! And if the Yankees don't like give him a ten-year deal, he's getting everything <laughs> he asked for. He can right. have anything he asked for. Right? Don't go anywhere, DJ. But the point is, this kid hits the uh, thrilling two-run home run to oh. tie it up, and uh, done it all year. Yeah, so, did it all year. So Chapman comes in, and and what did we? What was our first thing? You know, this guy throws 102 miles an hour, and he hangs a. a to Eight, Altuve, eighty-four mile an hour. To Jose slider. Altuve, who's mighty mouse, mighty you know, mouse. with a, with a baseball bat, yes. right? And the point. So I've had a lot of debate with, with <coughs> friends and uh, actually some listeners. I mean, do you pitch to this guy? Do you pitch? You know why? Because the kid who's coming up after him is one for twenty-two in the okay. series. But get the guy coming up after him is also going to be the MVP of the league, Bregman. Right? No, he was wasn't. Wasn't Bregman up next? No, it was a, uh, it was a. Uh, I have forgotten his name. I like, uh, like uh, Springer. Or? No, it wasn't one of the studs like that. I thought it was Bregman. I don't think so. No, it was uh, the kid was one one for twenty two. Mm. Uh, uh, I Spanish, thought it was Bregman. Yeah, Spanish name. Guriel, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. But the point is, all right. So that that just opens the door. Well, on look, let, let's not that. let's not nitpick and, and pitch one 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 you know one pitch. Yeah, he made a bad mistake against the guy. But we talked about this. The Yankees are loaded. If it wasn't for the Astros, the Yankees would be in the World Series. We we talked about that. Yeah, but they're not. But let's talk <laughs> about the National League. You know, I mean, is this a foregone conclusion? Can can the Nats keep it hot and still go strong and uh, against this team? We just talked about it, right? You're going to really face Verlander and Cole twice. Well, it boils down to pitching, like you just said. So, um, I mean, obviously, I think the first thing I'm thinking of is what's the ratings going to be on this World Series? What, because New York's not in you know, the media yeah, because market? because it's Houston versus Washington. But don't you think baseball fans are going to watch this anyway? I'm, I'm intrigued by the Nats. I'm just and saying. I'm intrigued by the... I, I love watching the Astros. Right. <laughs> We're going to watch the two best pitchers in baseball. Right. MVP on the Astros. Probably the MVP in the National League. Right? Rendon? Right? Uh, could be. I mean, Christian Yelich broke his kneecap late in the year. Right, so... Uh, Clay Ballinger would be up there. 
Not like Rencon. He's got no, big numbers. I'm not saying He's got big no. numbers. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. Nope. I know the Yankees are not in it, but I'm going to watch it anyway because it's oh. baseball and oh, well. we haven't missed a World Series since we were, what, four? <laughs> <laughs> And we're not missing this one, but my, again, my only point was, you know, the New York Yankees are not not in the. So what? You're not saying that that Boone's on the hot seat? No, not at right? all. I'm just no. saying he he gets open to second guessing. But I'm going to say this. But also, you know, what did Gary Sanchez do for us? Okay, you know? and exactly. Just bum Stanton, and now I'm starting to like really, you know, getting very concerned with this guy not pl- taking the field. And and we only owe him another eight years eight and another years. freaking two hundred million years. dollars. You know, come on. You know, but a lot of this came up about Cashman not making. Didn't he put the right players on the field? And besides the injuries, these 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 fill-ins stepped up and did everything. But you're right, Sanchez and Carson and Carson in that Carson, right? These yeah. guys didn't. The parrot. They just didn't show up. Right. You can't blame the GM, and I, I know, know I got I've had my gripes with Cashman over the years. Right. I think he put the right team, and I think Boone was the right manager, and they just ran into a buzzsaw. And if your guys didn't step up, you couldn't beat them, right. and they didn't, and they didn't. I want to say it was Alvarez uh, back to who was coming up uh, on Houston, but the point about it was. There was a guy in Houston who was one to twenty-two in the se- in the series. All right, I tell you, I I, I misspoke. And, but the point is, Altuve, guy is <laughs> solid, man. God Almighty. I wouldn't pitch to him. I wouldn't <laughs> woo woo you if. <laughs> Good honeymooners reference. Honeymooners yeah. reference. But if, <laughs> listen, I, I mean, All right. again, you know, you have great game one, game two: Cole Scherzer, Verlander, Strasburg. And, and is Cole's going to be a, Cole's going to be a free agent, and Strasburg I just read is able to opt out too. So those are two more key pitchers. Yep. And what is the most glaring hole for the New York Yankees? Pitching, starting pitching. Uh, yes. And CC is going to be done. We know no, that. he's done. He's we done. know that. And then you can throw out is Brett Gardner played his last game as a Yankee? Maybe. I've been saying that for We've two been years. Saying it for twelve years. Actually. <laughs> um, who else is a uh, Somebody else is going to probably be... Well, listen, we, we, we get it. They just ran into a better team, and we saw that coming. Oh, my but, point is D.D. Gregorius. Is, 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 I, don't, I don't think we're going to resign him. Absolutely we're going to resign no, him. No, I don't think so. Why, because he's injury I, prone? Listen, I love D.D. Gregorius. There's no reason to resign him. You're going to slide Glaber Torres, who's the shortstop of the future, okay. and D.J. LeMay, who goes to second base, and is coming back. You got Urshela... And at some point, you got to figure out what's happening at first base. I am telling you, and I'm going to go on record now, and I love D.D. D. I don't Lewis. think there's any room for Andy. I Hall. think D.D., it's going to be like a Robinson Cano thing where the Yankees want to keep him. They'll make an offer, but somebody sees the value in D.D. But I think he's going to say, this is my best chance, and I'm not going anywhere. I could be a legend in New York, and I'm staying. I hope so. Make me an offer, and I'll sign. <laughs> right, right. But I'm throwing it out there. So I'd love to actually to get some co- commentary from our fans about whether or not they think that Didi Gorius will be resigned. And team. I'm going out on a limb and saying he wants to stay here. And I'm I think sure he does. I would love to. But keep if somebody's going to give him thirty million dollars more, you brought up something before about first base. You know what? What? I would sign Gregorius. I'd keep Torres at second, and I would make. D.J. LeMahieu, a first baseman. I mean, D.J. LeMahieu He's six five. had, had I mean, a couple good scoops, man. Especially and he had, when, he had some growing pains. But especially when Aaron Judge made that throw and yep. doubled up the guy. You bet. Right? That was not an easy play. To keep your foot on the bag, backhand that, that, that little hopper thing. Guy is such a smooth, good ball player. But the, and, and I think Urshela at third, if he can stay healthy, I think there's no room for Andujar. Well, He's trade no, bait. No, but somebody He's actually bait. no. Somebody made a valid point that maybe they slide Andujar over to first base and start taking ground balls at first base. Mm. Listen, okay, or or he's trade bait and get starting pitching. No, they're moving. They're not him. keeping both. They're not. He's they're moving him. We'll see. All right. So listen, we'll keep we we.
all on board with the Astros and Nats World Series. Well, let's finish on one thing with the Nats. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, there was a player that they had. I don't know. He was on the team for a while. He, he signed as a free agent with some other team, didn't Who he? Who did he sign with? <laughs> for 300-something million. Oh, the Philly. B.H. B.H. Ha Harper. Uh, bra, yeah. Mr. Harper. Mr. Harper. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, Bryce Harper made a statement saying, hey, you know what? You know, I'm not jealous of that and the other thing. And I think that's probably accurate. Okay, well, you got you know, but, I mean, million in the Wouldn't bank. we all be remiss, though? That you, you, you know, we've all been, uh, at least, you know, you and I played sports at a high level. And, you know, your teammates are your teammates. And, again, we got lifelong friendships from, from playing sports from when we were like eight years old. Right? We do. But the point is, Harper, you know, I'm not saying buyer remorse, they get paid $300 million. But I just wanted to, to know, the Nationals go to the World Series the year after. He, he walks out the door. Agreed. Coincidence? <laughs> I don't know. Excellent. Yeah, I'm so glad we brought that yeah, up. Yeah, well, it was the elephant in the room kind of thing. Yeah, so I wanted to bring that up. All right, so listen. Our baseball coverage was sponsored by Deep Felipe's Bakery of Monticello, New York, who's a loyal sponsor of ours, and we certainly thank them. Absolutely. And let's move on. There's a couple of quick things we want to wrap up with, all right? Notable passings as we bring it up. Because we, we do it when, when a significant player in, in, in sports or, or a significant figure. And I think there's some people around our age, original ESPN anchor, Lou Palmer. Lou Palmer. Right? Absolutely. So we, I think he passed away yesterday. Yeah. Um, and I remember him, and I remember George Grant, too. Those oh, big time two. George Grant, right? Yeah. And uh, Lou Palmer passed at 83 years old and uh, was well-respected. Yep. You know, Tom, Chris Berman and Tom Meese, the late Tom Meese. The late who Tom Actually, Mees. I met Tom Meese in 1988. In Boston. In Boston, Boston during the Stanley Cup final of the yep. uh, Bruins and Oilers. Yep. So I had the privilege of meeting Tom Meese. And the sad thing about Tom Meese is he passed away a while ago. Now. He did, yeah. And, uh, and the other prominent ESPN young guy at the time who Lou Palmer mentored all three was Bob Lee. So all three, Berman or, you know, Berman and Bob Lee at least yep. spoke glowingly of him. And uh, apparently Lou Palmer, not, apparently he did, he played baseball at Seton Hall. So yep. he's got some Jersey roots. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I thought he was a notable pass. No, I said, yeah. Yeah, I did. And, yeah, we and you, you mentioned George Grant. He actually lives up by uh, our brother up in Rhode Island. That is actually. correct. Yes, yeah. he does. And uh, George Grant, uh, yep. great sports cast. So that was that was worth noting because we're sports fans and we we know Lou Palmer watched him. What was what was the debut? Seventy eight, they said, but I remember it's seventy nine. They it just had a fortieth anniversary oh, or something. Yeah, but it was no. funny. He said, uh, "So I think officially it was late seventy eight, and I want to say the first um, uh, show that or or sporting event that they broadcast was a basketball game." And it was athletes in action. Do you remember that? Oh. Right? Not that we ever <laughs> saw it. That's like bringing up what was the first it MTV was, song, it which was, was uh, Don't Load I, a Radio. I'm trying to remember. I think it was a college team versus athletes in action. Like oh, a basketball okay. game, yeah. right? So the point is ESPN, you know, we remember that from the late 70s, believe it or not. And here we are in 2019. Yeah. So. Yeah. But like I said, uh, trying to remember that was like, Who Killed the Video Star was the oh. first song on MTV or something, right. I guess. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Probably the same time frame, too. <laughs> um, Radio killed the <laughs> <laughs> And I'm drawing a blank if you ask me to tell you who was singing that. Oh, I, wow, I, I, that's I, uh, Sports with Mono and Mono at gmail.com. Right. I'm not even looking that one up. We haven't even spawned off our music with music. You That's know, right. Know. Um, anyway, so listen, real quick before we sign off, I wanted to give a shout out. One of our loyal listeners from Dublin, California, Tom oh. Kramer. Tommy Kramer. Right? Not well, to be confused with Tommy Kramer of Minnesota Vikings. Family. Right. Not the same guy. Not even the same spelling. <laughs> 
But he's finally got on board and he's listening to the show religiously. Well, and Tom he, Kramer, some, thank you so much. Nice, right? to, nice that you're listening, buddy. And I asked him if he could possibly send us a, a sports at mono and mono, sports with mono and mono at Gmail. Yeah. But he's, he's on board and he's got a son who's, you know, just like your son, he's probably the same age, right. playing sports. 13, right? And he's a big Rolling Stones fan, by the Not way. Not as big as me, but okay. <laughs> you know, uh, he would beg to differ, but yeah. whatever. But anyway, thanks. I ain't too proud to beg, Tom <laughs> But Tommy, thank you for listening, and we appreciate it. Right. Now I've got to make a shout-out to my Oakland Brave squad, my 12- and 13-year-old team, Coach Al Natoli and, and uh, Cortese and Chris Schlenker. And I know these guys listen to the show, too. Um, we played Ramsey, New Jersey, and we won 13-7. to And it was uh, a good night. Um, good. And I wanted to just shout out to my boys. And uh, I had my nephew just, do. He did great. He did, they had a great defensive game. And uh, so it's bittersweet. Um, that next Saturday will be senior night for these guys. So it's the last home game, and we're playing <laughs> Wayne, New Jersey. A little weepy there, I may huh? get a little beclempt, uh, <laughs> knowing you. that going in. Well, of course. But bittersweet, you know, there's a lot of fathers out there that have been through it, and mothers and Good. so on. So Good luck. Looking forward to it. I know it's special to you. Yeah. I know it is. Thank you. All right, listen, thanks for joining us, everybody, and we, we can't wait to get on the air and talk about stuff next week and yep. so forth. There's a lot going on. And, and World Series starting tomorrow. Yep. Right? But please, reach out to us either via SoundCloud or YouTube or Sports with Mono and Mono at Gmail. Yep. And there was a couple of guys at St. Joe's, the game this weekend. Go, oh, I, I listen to the show and I love it. And I say, great. Steve cool. and Jim and another guy, Steve. Can't remember their last names, but they're all on board with this. Cool. So we'll catch up to you guys next week. Thanks Absolutely. for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. All right. Be good. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.